Good morning, good morning, and welcome to our Marketplace Daily Devotion on this Monday morning. It is April the 12th, and to God be the glory, and I hope that you're ready to take your break to recharge yourself. It is just a little bit, actually, before noon, and so I am coming to you. So if you're ready to take that break, get your coffee, go ahead and get your lunch, because it's close to lunchtime, or your snacks, or whatever it is that you need to do just to... Uh, Take a, a, a wusa, you know, a breather to push back away. I know Mondays is always a busy, busy day. I myself is in a whole full day of training myself today, and I know I'm kind of glad to be able to push back a little bit from that because, you know, you can, your brain can only take so much when you're in training. You know, it's like they download and download and download, and after a while, you just kind of stop retaining. It's like, you know what? I can't take another thing. I can't learn another thing. So I am just excited to be able to stay step back away from that for a minute this morning and to just come to you uh, just for a, a, a little bit to get into God's word, to find out, amen, what he is saying to us today. And so today's devotion is going to be talking about a certain hope, amen, a certain hope hope. You have hope in Christ Jesus. And it's going to be coming from Jeremiah, the uh, 17th chapter and the seventh verse. But with this, I probably need to start at the fifth. So it doesn't sound like I'm kind of coming in, in the middle of something here of what God is talking about. So I'm going to read actually from the fifth through the eighth, and then we'll get into our little short story here. It says, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusts in man. So it's already telling you not to put your trust in man, not to put your trust in, in people because they will let you down. Okay. And it says, and make it flesh his arm. So not to lean on your own flesh, your own, you know, your, in your own thinking, your own mindset, your own ways, you know, acknowledge God, not lean on your, you know, what you think you can do. It says, so cursed be the man that trusts trust in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart uh, departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited it. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> you don't want to put your trust in man. And then our key verse here says, Blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For when your hope is in God, our eighth verse, our last verse here says, For he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So this says when you trust in the Lord, you won't experience when, 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 when there's parchedness in the land. Why? Because it'll be, your land will be, uh, will, will, will be, it says, um, it, it will be green. Your leaves will be green and, and, and the waters, you know, you won't be all dried up. The waters will still come. And, and it says, uh, neither shall you cease from yielding fruit. So you won't have to worry about not having fruit on your tree because why? Your trust is in the Lord. So you will still yield good fruit. You will still have water in a dry land. Amen. You will be a bountiful and you will have plenty. And so I just thank God for this daily devotion today because it's talking about a certain hope. You have hope when you put your hope in Christ Jesus. You have hope. Amen. This, I mean, this is a good devotion today. This should be a devotion that get you, uh, get you stirred back up. Amen. Uh, you know, I mean, it is an awesome devotion. Talking and, and just knowing and thinking 
on the hope that we have in Christ Jesus when we trust in him. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen. You don't have to worry about what you have and what you don't have. You you know that because uh, Jesus is your father, you know that he only wants good for you because he only, as Jeremiah 29, 11 says, he only have good thoughts towards you so that you can have an expected end. So amen. Today, we just thank God for this, 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 this word because this word, amen, is something to chew on. It's something, amen, that, that should build your faith up in him, knowing that you have his hope. Your, uh, your trust is in him and your hope is in him. So I'm going to go ahead and read our short story today, amen. One of the great hymns of the church is The Solid Rock by Edward Moat. And William Bradbury begins, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You've heard that song, amen, before, I'm sure. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Yes, I'm sure you, you know, catch the little tune there now. Amen. One of my favorite hymns. It says, I dare not trust the sweetest fame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, that solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. One of my favorite hymns. I'm not going to do you like that. I'm not going to sing for you today, but I love that song. Amen. So on what, what is your hope built? On what is your hope built on today? And that, that's a question. That's something you need to pause a minute and think about. On what is your hope built on today? Is your hope built on what you can provide and what you can do, you know, in your, you know, in your education and in your means of, you know, making a way for yourself and your family? Is your hope built on, you know, leaning to the arms of the flesh, you know, what you can make happen? You may hope for a raise in pay at work. I know I do. <laughs> We're all hoping for that, right? <laughs> You may hope that you pass an exam in school, if some of you are in school and taking courses. You may hope, you may even hope that you win a contest you have entered. Since hope are based, uh, since hopes are based on externals over which we have little control over, a favorite view of our work by the boss, the right question, being asked by the professor, our name being drawn among thousands of entries, bet but all these hopes fade into insignificance when compared with the greatest hope of all, and that is our hope of salvation in Christ Jesus. So it says all of these things that we can hope for, they pale in comparison. They fade away in comparison when we compare them to the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. And that hope is an absolute certainty. That hope, that hope that we, 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 we put our trust in, that hope of salvation in Christ, it is an absolute certainty because it is based not on ourselves or of our good works, but squarely on Jesus' blood and righteousness. <laughs> So my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest fame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. So the thought that I'm going to leave with you today, amen. I'm not going to keep you long this Monday because I know, like I said, most Mondays for the most of us is super busy. Uh, getting back into that workflow after a long weekend, you know, it's kind of hard to get our minds back into that geared motion of, okay, you know, I got to work today, got to buckle down, got to grind, you know. <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to keep you long, but I do want you to know that you have a certain hope, an absolute hope, and that is, amen, the hope of, salva of salvation in Christ Jesus. So the thought that I'm going to leave with you today is circumstances change. Yes, they do. They change every day. Sometimes I know we wish they didn't, but they do. Uh, people leave and possessions get destroyed. But if any of these are the source of our hope, 
We are in far of a lot of headache <laughs> and heartache. We are in for a lot of heartache. If that's, if, if that's what you have your trust in, things and people, you're, you're going to, you, I'm telling you, because people let you down. Things, you know, get torn, they get destroyed, they leave you, you know. <laughs> and so you can't put all your trust and hope in that, in material things. We have to trust in God. So we want to thank, thank, thank the Lord that our hope in him, it never disappoints. Our hope in him never disappoints. Amen. So I'm going to leave you with a prayer to start your week out today with. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for how you kept us over the weekend. We thank you, Father, for how you have us now, God, starting our week. And we would not dare start our week out without acknowledging you first, without giving giving you all of the praise and the glory for what you've already done. Father God, if you didn't do anything else for us, you've already done enough because you sent your son Jesus, amen, to die on the cross to give us, amen, salvation, eternity. You know, that is the free gift, the gift of eternity and life with you. So we thank you for that. I pray that you help us as we go forward into our week. You will help us, Father God, to meet our challenges, our goals, our corporate goals. You will help us, Father God, to render unto Caesar what is due Caesar, to give him that time wholeheartedly, not cheat him out of his time, not, you know, be, be, be tempted to, you know, to take from the office things that doesn't belong to us, not to be tempted to stretch our breaks out longer than they need to be, uh, not to be tempted to, you know, to cheat Caesar of his time, but to give him the time that is rightly, rightfully due him. Because Father God, you sit high and you look low and you know what we do. You can't, we can't hide anything from you. So we thank you. Help us to be fruitful. You said, Father God, even in this verse of scripture, that when we acknowledge you, Father God, you will help us to be fruitful and not be barren. But when we, Father God, put our trust in you wholeheartedly, that we would be fruitful, uh, our, our, our land would flourish, Father Father God, we would not have drought. We would not see drought in our land. We would not see barrenness. And so, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for the raises that you're going to give us. We thank you, Father God, for the doors that you're opening, Father God, for the resources that we need, whether we're self-employed or whether we're working corporately, Father God, or if we're both like I am, God, you will give us the resources that we need, amen, to continue to be able to sow into your kingdom, to be able to have, God, and be the lender, not the borrower, to be the head and not the tail. That's what you promised us, God. And we thank you so much today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to subscribe, share, and like on the YouTube channel, which is the prayer channel with Odessa Trice. It is the prayer channel with Odessa Trice. And so I thank you so much today. And I pray that you have a wonderful blessed day and that your the rest of your week be, uh, uh, be filled with God's goodness and glory. Amen. And until tomorrow, smooches. Mwah.